Welcome back to What You Missed, a video game news show where I discuss articles that occurred within days to a week ago that you may have missed that are important to the video game industry and possibly to you. Before I start today's video, I wanted to let you know that RAV Power, the same battery bank that sent me a battery bank before, sent me another battery bank. They wanted to promote this product, and I don't get any money for doing this promotion, but I just wanted to let you know this stuff, because I know a lot of my people in the audience use cell phones and have batteries that drain, and use the Nintendo Switch. So RAV Power sent me over the 20,100 mAh external battery. This is Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0, has USB-C, and and type C ports. It has fast charge in, fast charge out, and several ports to use at the same time. So it's not just one USB to whatever, and it comes with several cords if you don't have the right connection types, as well as a carrying case. It's a really nice external battery that holds quite a bit of a charge and allows you to charge your devices very quickly. I personally tested it on my phone and my significant other's phone, and it works. It didn't blow up the devices and it charged them very very quickly I was very satisfied with this device when you're out and about doing the things that you're doing outside of your easy to use convenient charging port this is a great substitution and right now they have a coupon deal to take 20% off so check the link in the description below if you're interested in getting this item and uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this this is a longer ad spot than I usually do but it's very nice of them to continue to support me so if you support me just take a look at their product if you're not interested you're not in interested, but it's just nice that they send me these things. So on to the video. So this is the second portion of the news stories that I was covering before. This might end up being a legendary double upload. Double upload today, double upload today, double upload. Rest in peace, Scarce, wherever you may be. Scarce is gone, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not subbing in for him, and I'm not looking to take over. In fact, that was a stale meme, and uh, I just had to give some shout-outs to my homie, Scarce. Enjoy life wherever you are, Scarce. We're thinking about you, homie. Your memes and... Yeah. I passed one to you. Double open today, double open today, double open today, double open today. Now, after that forced meme, I think we should just jump right into the news. Mega Man Maker is a neat looking, unofficial Mega Man level editor. There's a cool PC Mega Man level editor that has come out, and it's not necessarily like official and compatible with things like Mega Man Legacy Collection necessarily, but it allows you to edit together your own Mega Man levels. There's an official trailer for it on YouTube, there's an official site for it as well. You guys can take a look at it, but I'm fairly certain that they're not affiliated with Capcom and this isn't an approved project because on their website, they do put a disclaimer at the bottom stating that they're not affiliated with them. So not really a lot of Mega Man level editors. I believe that there was in a remastered version, um, Mega Man powered up. I believe you could make your own custom levels, but that was for a PSP game. And since then, Mega Man Legacy Collection didn't come with a level editor. So there you go. If you got the itch to make Mega Man levels just like in Mario Maker you have the option to do it so here's an article that will probably piss off every Nintendo fan there is or basically a lot of people even non Nintendo fans odd world creator Lorne Lanning quote has no faith in the Nintendo switch and says Nintendo's thinking quote killed Iwata why would you even say something like that why would you even bring up Iwata's name and his death and reference this that's uh that's all right let's get into this basically he was saying how at the end of the life cycle of the Wii and the Wii U, the only people that were making money on that system were the first party developers, which again was Nintendo. And he was saying that it was evaporating third party support. When the Wii U came along after the Wii, it was all but gone. And because we know that the Wii U was technically a commercial failure, no one wanted to develop for it because it was an underpowered system when it came in comparison to the 360 and the PS3. And again, it was a unique and interesting thing to develop for. I'm pretty sure that it had PowerPC architecture. Don't quote me, but it just wasn't the same and easy architecture to develop for as it was on other consoles at the time. Basically, he went on to say that the Switch is a mobile console and it's interesting, but unfortunately, developers are not going to want to bring over titles because it's difficult. They have to spend more energy, more time, more effort into getting it onto that console. And again, he quotes that it's an underpowered console. That would be the Nintendo Switch. And yeah, 
Yes, while it is technically underpowered, it still produces 900p easily and 1080p when it's docked and then on the go 720p. So it really does depend on the tricks that developers use. Achieving 1080p at 60fps is going to be basically next to impossible unless you're Nintendo and you have those developing tricks or you have a very light game. So that's kind of crappy and that pisses me off personally. I would way rather have 1080p than the intro stages of 4k on consoles. I'm just saying. But he does get down to business and the quote killed Awada was not taken out of context. He was talking about the biggest problem he saw at Nintendo. So the biggest problem I see at Nintendo is the thinking. Personally, I think it killed Awada that he couldn't move the organization into a really successful arena. Yeah. And so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, he basically says that that killed Awada. He's saying that Awada was so frustrated at Nintendo for not being able to express himself creatively for not being able to take the organization into a successful direction and get it out of the slump of the Wii U that he died from that stress. And that very well may be true, but what a disgusting thing to say in an interview. You could have left that whole part out about Iwata and just talked about the business practices of Nintendo. It's very unfortunate that Nintendo wasn't successful with the Wii U. And I think Iwata was a gamer for the gamer. He was after the gamer's heart. He wanted to have fun and he was a great man to aspire to. This guy was a living legend and if you check out the list of games he's been on board for developing, producing, and if you check out his accomplishments as a video game developer as well as a businessman, you are going to be impressed. So to say that Nintendo killed him, I understand that it is in a metaphorical sense, but that is a disgusting and distasteful thing to say. I don't have much else to say about that and I think I should just move on. Hackers claim to have dumped the Nintendo Switch OS kernel. There's apparently a vulnerability that was detected by a hacker, a Nintendo fan. That's basically what they're calling him and is saying that he has fellow hackers. I don't know to what degree the validity of that is, but basically he dumped the kernel and you can see a picture of it. Um, I think he put that on Twitter and he says, feels good, man. And he, he basically dumped out the OS and was able to get it out. And this is the first stage in what you need to do to be able to start developing games and making your own custom games for a system. The OS kernel is basically the key to the operating system. It's the key to Windows. Every operating system has some type of kernel, something, some backbone. And continuing on with that, there's the ability to run NES games on the Switch because apparently there's a built-in NES emulator. Once again, as I stated before, they dumped that kernel, but there have been people who were able to find an application called Flog, which turned out to be an NES emulator. Now, once again, I, I, I'm not shocked by this at all because Nintendo has already said that they are going to be releasing NES ROMs for their online service, classic titles, and things like that, and there's, of course, the virtual console. So this isn't a shock to me. It's nice that there's a built-in emulator, so you don't have to necessarily download one, but I'm curious to why they build it in instead of allowing you to just download the application or something. I don't know, it just seems like it's something that takes up more room in the Switch's very minuscule memory. So yeah, you have expansion cards and stuff like that, I get that, but still, you know, it's weird. It's weird how companies do things sometimes. And finally, I would like to end on this. A while ago, I talked about the best graphics card you could probably buy for the money right now, and I explained that the 1050 Ti and the 1060 are about what you would want to get if you had a prefab system, or even a custom system, and you just wanted a little bit more graphics performance. Well, there are cryptocurrencies mining operations that have been going on for a couple years. You don't need to know anything about that. That's a very whole different world as opposed to gaming. But the point is, because of this situation, Nvidia and AMD GPU supplies have gone down and the prices have gone way up to a ridiculous amount. Now, the 1050 Ti and 1060s and the middle of the line cards don't suffer because anyone who's heavily involved in these type of operations aren't going to buy mid-range GPUs to use with them instead opting for the highest possible that they can get or the AMD Radeon series or you know the RX 470s 480s stuff like that which is why you can't really find those easily anymore because AMDs work better for that but at the end of the day they'll get what they can get so this has thrown the GPU sales and prices out of whack so if you go GPU buying and you're shopping for GPUs getting mid-range to low tier card and I know it sucks man you want those glorious 
122, 150 frames at 4K, I, I get that, but you're gonna have to pay an arm and a leg, and your GPU in five to 10 years will be worth $30 maybe if you're lucky. So think about it that way. You spend $1,000 now, you spend $500 now, and you can go on eBay right now and find old GPUs for 10 to 20, and when they were launched, they were $500, $600. Just keep that in mind when you're GPU shopping. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been your host, Pro Mario. I know one of these articles are very angering, but there is good news in a lot of the other ones. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like it, share it with everyone you can, wherever you can, forums, Facebook, Twitter, share it with your friends, share it with your parents. And I've been your host once again, Proto Mario, and I'm signing out. As always, good gaming, God bless, and thank you for taking the time out to watch this video.